Acids and bases can be combined together very carefully. By using a process called titration, you can take very precise measurements and learn a fair amount about the acids and the bases. A little bit of vocab to get out of the way. When doing a titration, there is some special equipment we use. We use a long glass graduated cylinder that has a valve at the end. This valve is called a stopcock. And with this device called a burette, we can measure very careful volumes. These burettes are often graduated to a tenth of a milliliter, which means that we can estimate volumes to a hundredth of a milliliter. By placing an Erlenmeyer flask underneath the burette, you can add the solution from your burette to a solution that's in the flask. Now the Erlenmeyer flask has this triangular shape because it's very helpful for swirling the contents together without having them spill out at the top. The solution in the burette is called a titrant. This is the solution we are going to titrate into the Erlenmeyer flask. The analyte is the substance in the flask. This is usually the substance that we are trying to figure something out about, often trying to find the concentration of the analyte. These titration reactions really tend to be stoichiometry problems. You want to end the titration right when you're at the equivalent point, or right when you're at the perfect stoichiometric point. In other words, you don't have any excess acid or excess base. There are a couple of tools available to find out when you're at the equivalence point, when you're at the stoichiometric point. But the easiest one is an indicator. An indicator is something that changes color in a certain pH range. For most labs at the introductory level, we use phenolphthalein as the indicator. It's a relatively safe substance, and it changes colors in the pH range we most normally use. 